What is up, everybody? Welcome to day three here in the round of eight in the ASL season 17. We've got a sick PvP for you. This is going to be uh, Bisu versus Snow. Uh, and honestly, Artosis, I could not really think of a more exciting matchup to have uh, for PvP than these two guys. Oh, okay. Two amazing Protosses from two very different eras. That that's certainly right. The best Protoss of all time versus the best Protoss right now. So that's quite the match. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people look at this and think, "Wow, Snow is finally going to win an ASL or something like that." And I mean, that's I think that's a fine a fine guess to have. I think he is probably the strongest player overall right now. But I do have to say, Tasteless, I think that Bisu is in unbelievable shape. And I am going to say that I think Bisu is going to win against Snow here tonight. You know, he very well could. Uh, Snow has never really had a hard time in PvP. He's pretty solid. I would point out that, like, his Reaver Micro should just be better. That seems like a yep. pretty important uh, ability to have in PvP. But Reaver Micro that Snow is really known for is more PvT Reaver Micro, which is really an asymmetric fight. Uh, yeah. Where PvP Reaver Micro, I mean, obviously it's important, but uh, anyways, it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm excited, guys. We're gonna do a quick video and then hop into this best of five with the two Protoss legends. As Artos has said, the best from the past and now the current best Protoss here. Let's do this. Hello and welcome to the third quarterfinals match here at ASO Season 17, brought to you by Well New Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs, with Sharp and Hero achieving victory in their respective first and second matches of the Round of 8 last week, the first match of the Round of 4 is set in stone. Today you'll be treated to a best of 5 Protoss vs Protoss, let's meet Snow and Bisu getting ready for today's match. Hi. Let's start with the first place finisher of Group D in the round of 16, Snow. You are joining the round of 8 having defeated Speed and Shine in the round of 24 and then Action and Sharp in the round of 16. You've only met Terran and Zerg players on your path this season. And in the quarterfinals you'll be facing a Protoss for the first time, in a best of 5 at that. Your win rate in PvP and best of 5 is quite good, with a 65% win rate against Protoss and an 8 win, 2 loss record in your last 10 games. Because of how strong your record is, you must be quite chuffed to be meeting Bisu here. What are your thoughts on the bracket draw? Uh, to be honest, I wasn't that happy. Weirdly enough, I do well in PvP in a tournament setting but lose a lot on a regular basis. I wanted to play the one remaining Terran, but in the end got a Protoss, it can't be helped. To be honest, it's a bit troublesome. I wonder if this burdensome feeling for Snow is because Bisu is not just your regular Protoss. Bisu, you're also getting ready for your first best of five PvP this season. Uh, defeating C and Light in the round of 24 and while you lost to Solki, you still succeeded in the round of 16 with wins over JYJ. Looking at your matchups here, all the victories have been against Terran. How do you feel going up against Snow now that you're facing him in the round of eight? 
To be honest, when the bracket was drawn, I thought he would be the hardest opponent. This won't be easy, I thought. But I practiced, I prepared, and some confidence did start to creep in. I actually think running into snow is better than if I were to play a Terran or a Zerg here. Some conflicting views from our players here with Snow saying he faced some difficulties practicing against Protoss and Bisu saying he's gained confidence through practice. Looking at the head-to-head, -head, we only have one game on record, the elimination match of a round of 16 group in season 11, with Snow taking a 2-0 win to advance to the round of eight at the time, and Bisu unfortunately ending said season there. If you think back to that time, Snow, I bet you have some good memories. Oh yeah, I, I didn't have an easy time advancing then, but I still ended up winning. But it was so long ago, I don't think it'll be of any use now. Oh, it's a good memory, but time has passed. The feeling of victory is but a blur. Yeah, so I think what's important today, more so than whether Bisu is doing well or not, is how I managed to roll the dice. Snow says it's all up to the dice and not so much your form here, Bisu. Now, Bisu, I heard Mini was your practice partner for this. Mini and uh, Rain, who's currently taking a break. Also YSC and who else was it? Zealot. We played and I've gained confidence, so I have some expectations for today. To be frank, it has been a while since we've had an extended Protoss vs Protoss series in the ASL, with the last one taking place between Mini and Best in the round of 8 in Season 11. And for the first time now in six seasons, I bet there's a lot of people looking forward to seeing this PvP unfold. I wanted to ask you about your confidence once la one last time, Son. I would lose a lot in practice, but I prepared for the tournament with uh, victory in mind. I will try to do well. Looking forward to it. Bisu, if you manage to win today, what score do you think it will be? I consider the first set to be vital. If I take that one, I think I'll win the match. And if I lose, uh, things will get difficult, so winning the first game is very important. I can't wait to see what build Bisu came prepared with for the first set. To close things out, let's hear Snow and Bisu's resolutions for today's Round of 8 match. Snow? It's been a while since I've been to the round of four. I really want to advance today. I shall win. Looking forward to it. Bisu? It was like running into a wall when I lost to Snow that last time. Uh, but thinking about all of those individual sets that I've taken off of him, I will think of those and win today. Looking forward to cool games from the two of you. Thanks for the interview. You're waiting for the third quarterfinals match of ASL Season 17 with Well New Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs between Bisu and Snow. As we wonder which Protoss will be joining the round of four, let's kick things off. All right. I'm so excited for this. Mm. I think that there's a real shot that Bisu takes it. If I had to bet on one, I would say Snow but this should be an extremely close match. Both these guys are so good at all the aspects of PvP, but I think particularly at electing uh, good build orders to get ahead uh, or stay safe. So I'm super interested in the early game here and what it's going to look like and, um, yeah, how it'll pan out. Yeah, yeah. It, this is this is going to be exciting, man, uh, as far as PvPs go. I, like, I, I'm... I just want to see if Bisu actually has that kind of extra special something still. Because I feel like he does. He's been playing fantastically lately. We know that Snow is probably the strongest player right now. Statistically online, he's crushing it. But some of these players that play fantastically and everything when it comes to the biggest stage don't deliver. Bisu is not one of those players. Bisu is a player who yeah. knows how to win championships. He knows how to play under pressure. And I am ready for Bisu to finally win an ASL Tasteless. That's what I'm ready for. 
<laughs> well, I think if anybody could beat Snow here, Bisu's got a really good shot. He's always been strong at the matchup. Bisu never um, really falls to nerves or anything like that. I mean, he's basically got that seasoned veteran past uh, of being the very, very best of the best. Snow, uh, online, I think he might just be the best player there is right now. Yeah. But when it comes to the ASL, he's not always as consistent. He does occasionally come out here with, um, you know, besides PVT, PVP, PVZ, sometimes not the best execution. Mm -hmm. That's what's prevented him from really being on the center stage, always stealing the show here in the ASL. Yeah, yeah. If he could, if he could deliver those skills, that uh, he would be a champion a hundred percent. I think just his win rates are astronomical. They're like flash level win rates. So uh, we'll see if he's able to do that this season. It did feel like he wasn't playing perfectly. Like he obviously had that game against Speed, which was unbelievable. But we'll see if he can keep that up. Uh, you know, where as we go into this, you can see Bisu has like more experience in these best of fives and everything, and has done. Uh, a very good job overall, but not a lot of PVPs from either of them in best of five scenarios. Uh, from what it looks like, uh, I think that Snow only has a couple. One that he beat Mini, and then he lost to Rain in that finals. And then uh, Bisu is mostly just Smash, Zerg, and Terran players. <laughs> so, yeah, no <laughs> no best of five uh, PVPs for him here. But Bisu has always been a really strong PVP player. Right? Like, it, you know, his rivalry against Stork so many years ago in the Kespa days uh, was a pretty close one. I think Stork might have been like a map or two up on him, but Stork was amazing. Uh, and I've always I've always been impressed with his PvP. I don't know about you. You probably watch more Bisu PvPs than me, but I think he's fantastic at the matchup. I think he's really good. His micro early on is really sharp, and he's almost never overpowered. Mm -hmm. So he's able to do, uh, you know, tech builds and, and defend pretty well. Um Look, he's lived through all the ages of PvP. And we're in a bit of a new age of PvP right now. It seems like speed shuttle and locking into speed shuttle and not taking out of Dragoons right away is more popular mm -hmm. than ever before. This was a fad a long time ago. Um, and we'll see if it stays the same here. Uh, obviously, if it's going to be Dragoon, uh, speed shuttle, Reaver, in mass, we're talking maybe two uh, shuttles, maybe four Reavers. Um, before we see any attack, uh, you would imagine that, that Snow should have an edge there, but I think anybody that's at Bisu's level should be able to, to hang in PvP, Reaver versus Reaver. I was talking about that asymmetry earlier in mm -hmm. PvT, Reaver uh, shuttle control, where you know the Terran is at this disadvantage and can be punished by the shuttle Reaver, but when you're both doing it, it should be pretty interesting to see how they behave, what they go for, and of course, are we going to have any risky builds? Are we going to have Let's say three gate goon, no observer, or super quick uh, nexus with uh, no observer. I mean, these are ways that you can play where you're basically betting that they're not going to behave a certain way, and if they don't uh, behave in that in, in that way, you get um, uh, further ahead macro wise. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. PVP uh, openers, I feel like, have a lot of complexity to them, and things have to be really mapped out because otherwise you're going to be in a bad position. And what two better players to? to unpack this matchup with than Bisu and Snow. Yeah, yeah. A, a, you know, being on that kind of even ground, we'll see if his uh, Reaver Monk, uh, his Reaver control is functional enough here uh, to beat the best micro player that we have as far as that very key unit goes. Looks like we are getting ready to get into map number one. It's going to be a Neo Dark Origin. Going to be a fun one, guys. Get ready for this. Snow versus Bisu. Who's going to take that very important game one and set the tone? Let's figure it out. Okay, we've got Snow here in the top and Bisu in the bottom. It is a map with only two spawns, so I'm always interested in seeing, are we going to have any kind of proxy gates here? Um, bo both of these players actually proxy gate, I would say, less than the other Protoss players in PvP that we have in ASL. They tend to lean more into the early mid game to try to find their advantages. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but we do see Bisu sending one probe out, headed to the low ground. Packed in here, by the way. Mm -hmm. Two big superstars here for ASL. 
So this probe is moving out, and it will be a proxy. Um, yeah. So, look, the proxy gate is one of the oldest openings in the game. It was used to cheese against all three of the different races. It remains very strong at, an, at a high level. And so Bisu is going to elect to come in here and put the pressure on. Now, notice he didn't put the pylon right in the natural. So this is a hidden proxy gate. There are proxy gates where you make it just right at the bottom of the ramp and try to barrel up there. In this case, it's going to be a really quick um, set of two gates. Oh, it could be one as well. We'll see. Um, and then uh, trying to hit Snow as he's teching into gas in a core. So Snow won't have the ability to just throw down a second gate and, gate, excuse me, and try to hard counter it. Yeah, it is going to be a double nine gate. So that is pretty much as aggressive as you can get. And in fact, he's even sending the probe back. So he doesn't want to telegraph this at all by an early scout. He wants to get his economy back online as much as he can. And you can see that Snow is actually checking. And look at this. Oh, he sends it back into his main base. So he was looking for a proxy gate. Doesn't see it. And he doesn't scout. So this all looks a bit better now. Uh, and in fact, Bisu, by the way, did turn that probe around. So it looks like he brought it back to make sure that his scout looked like it was at a normal timing. Yeah, it looks like it's either a gateway scout or a um, maybe after gas scout. I'm not exactly sure, but it doesn't look suspicious. And Snow is known in this matchup for not scouting right away. He likes to basically confirm he's not getting hard cheesed. Mm -hmm. And um, and then he'll just try to, to, to tech up and develop. So... Look, this Zealot Rush won't be as potent as if it was right out, right at the bottom of his ramp, but it's probably going to be as strong or stronger just because Snow only checked for right outside of his base. Mm -hmm. Now, he put a pylon down at the gateway. Is this for a Dragoon prison a little bit later on, or what What exactly is that pylon all about? I'm not so sure. A Zealot pops oh, out I here for Snow? Yeah, yeah, you so put it down next to that gate. He wants to, to trap it in there. Okay. So I hope we get a shot of it. Dude, excellent <laughs> micro like here from Snow. Yeah, really good control. Oh, my God. I feel God. like we're missing. Yeah, so this is a pylon and two batteries. Oh, wow. And it's hard It's hard to force the Dragoon to pop out. Snow might have a trick set up to make it pop. But it's one pylon, three batteries, and the Dragoon is stuck. Ooh. This is really bad. This could be game ending. You can use the battery to basically supercharge the Zealots, allow them to continue to... Oh, my God! Snow's control is so good. Yeah, his... And he's out of range of the last pylon. He might lose the Zealot. <gasps> okay, he is going to be able to heal up, I think. Well, he actually sends it towards that main mineral line. The probe control of Snow has been pretty out of control. Finally, we do get that shield heal. Not a lot of mining going on for Beast right now. And don't forget, if this pylon goes down, his batteries aren't going to work anymore. So he's going to get in there on top of that Dragoon, but it breaks through the pylon just in the nick of time. If he had been able to get that with the pylon still up, I feel like he'd maybe be at an advantage right now. But Snow is starting to hold everything. Yeah, I mean, a lot of probes are being killed here. You keep in mind, it's three Zealot hits to kill a probe, or, or uh, he's going to try to trap the Zealot down here. I don't know. It's, it's just in range of the battery. Tough decision. It does get picked off. This is still winnable for Bisu, but there is a world where Snow can just keep microwing and hang on. Oh, my God. By yeah. the way, the, with the pylon remade, he can still use this battery. Mm -hmm. There are still Zealots coming in. I don't know how many probes are mining right now. Now, three Dragoons is where it starts to get a little bit hard to sustain the damage that you're dealing out here. Note that Bisu sent two probes up here to fight with this. If it, he can just kill either another Dragoon, oh, he's going to try to go for a body block. Oh, man, he's taking so much damage here, though. It, it really feels like Snow is starting to gain a big edge. A lot of healing on that battery, but he is going to be able to pick this all off. Only four probes have been mining this whole time, so that's obviously very, very low. Uh, Bisu is up in probes, but he's so far behind in tech. Yeah, this is a problem. Three Dragoons can basically take care of this pretty easily. Uh, Bisu elected not to hide any of them. He's trying to see if he can't corner one of these. Oh, my God, great control here. Is he going to get the one kill on the Dragoon? That would be huge. Oh, man. Yeah, seriously, if he kills the Dragoon, that is pretty big stuff there. But the battery helping out a lot here for Snow. Snow Micron, like his life is on the line, and it is inside of the game. So uh, it looks like... Thanks, Artosis. <laughs> yeah. Guys, when they lose, we don't kill them. Just yeah. what's clear to you. Even if you die in the game, you don't die in real life. <laughs> but Snow <laughs> is playing as if he does. 
Uh, he's got another third Dragoon to replace that one weaker one. He's trying to buy time. He does uh, take a little bit more of the battery energy here. Now, I think that there might be a Forge back at home. I'm not totally sure what this game is supposed to look like from here. Um, he's still getting the two Zealots to come in, but probes are being made consistently right now. Uh, he's not able to kill that one Dragoon in the back. So I don't know where the probe count is for each side, but I feel like it's becoming a more and more comfortable game here mm -hmm. for Snow. does seem that way. We've had a lot, lot, lot of uh, Zealots die. Like, he's he's made so many Zealots at this point. And now we're up to four Dragoons. Range on the way. There is a wall being made right now, but he does not have a forge currently. So I am I am a little bit nervous here for Snow. I mean, for Bisu, right? Like, it, this looks really bad to me. It was, you know, just watching this as a Terran player, I'm like, I don't... I mean, if he was playing against Terran, he'd just make a Nexus now and be fine. But uh, he's <laughs> playing against Snow, who has a bunch of Dragoons. He's going to try to run around with his own Zealots. Snow has to be ready for the counterattack. The fact that he doesn't see anything here should be alarming. Yeah. Uh, he's actually going to have the Zealots come in here for an intercept. Snow might be too good with his control. Five Zealots is still a headache to micro against. Hmm. And uh, don't forget, and guys, it takes a lot longer for Dragoons to kill Zealots than for Zealots to kill Dragoons. It's just the Dragoons can be microed really heavily, but much higher damage output for the Zealots and harder for those Dragoons to get those kills. So, like, you have to take this really seriously, even though you n technically don't need to be hit by them. Yeah. What Snow needs to do is slowly chip away at this. Uh, he is continuing to damage and chase down these remaining um, Zealots. And, and Snow, I mean, this looks like a very winnable position for him. He has got the Robo coming. He's developing into what we would consider to be a pretty healthy and normal looking um, early mid game here PVP. So he's got, I think he had Dragoon range. I, I can't mm -hmm. say for 100%, but I, I believe he has it. We'll be able to tell next time we see a shot fire here. Yeah, he does have um, it. He does have it. He, he does have it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that, that clearly, yeah, he has Dragoon range. So now he can take out the, the, the gateways. It seems like Beast is going to try to come in here and, and sandwich this, and he might be able to do some decent damage. Snow needs to control his Dragoons and basically snipe the Dragoons here of Bisu. Mm -hmm. And you can see that is exactly what he's going for. Bisu is getting some damage there. He's making it hard on Snow, right? Like, he's... I, I really appreciate what Bisu's trying to do. He didn't make cannons. He didn't... It, you know, he didn't, like, wuss out or anything here. He's trying to just make gateway units and make this work via tactics and micro. But Snow has picked off so many units at this point. It does feel a little bit impossible for Bisu, but I love the way that he's approaching this. Like, he is... He's really trying to win. He's he's not screwing around here. He's not taking like a position that isn't going to have a way out. He's he's trying to make something happen, but Snow's micro might just be too good. Yeah, Bisu continued to lean into the rush even when he was behind, which is not not that common, but I kind of like the idea because if Snow overextends at all, then he's right back to plowing up the ramp and doing damage, but you can see that once Snow has enough Dragoons, he can just keep microing forever. GG, and Bisu loses that basically due to the first few interactions at the start. Yeah. I actually thought he was going to win that game when he got the shield battery wall up. Yeah. Um, I didn't even realize for a second that that was Snow's shield battery off to the side. Um, but Snow had very good control. He picked off the first two Zealots, and that takes the wind out of the sails of the rush. Mm -hmm. And from there, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward game. Yeah, I, I love the ideas that Bisu came in with. And if he had uh, maybe not had that first Zelda go down to one health so quickly, getting zero damage, I feel like he might have been able to win. If he had gotten that Dragoon before he lost his pylon, I think he might have been able to win there. He was, like, very close to breaking snow. And actually, we are finally going to see the right moment in the replay. Like, this first Zelda coming in, watch this probe micro. This was a huge deal. This is the first Zelda that came into Snow's base. And... He just, he screwed it up so badly. Look at that one health left over. Just not useful at all. Gets killed off. Uh, Literally and, like the yeah. best micro you could ever ask for. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. It, it, that one that one difference. And look, Snow was trying to block this in such a way to force the Dragoon to pop on the outside. Wasn't quite able to do that. But he blocked. Look at the blocking here. He's trying to stop those elves from getting to the shield batteries. And you can see Bisu switching targets. 
because he needs to get to the shield battery and he was just out of range. The fact that these got like the fact that Snow can micro and keep him out of shield battery range by one hex to kill two additional zealots says about all you need to know about Snow. Scary stuff. Right now, Snow with a one to uh, zero lead here versus Bisu. Um, I gotta say, that was an intimidating loss. Mm. You two gate like that, I mean, you had the layup, everything was ready to go. And with, I honestly can't even imagine better control than what Snow did back there, specifically with the first zealot that went to the mineral line. Mm -hmm. Normally you have that to stay alive where you can't have enough probes to defend your gateway and keep mining, but uh, Snow did it. Guys, short break, game number two in just a little bit. Welcome back, everybody. This PvP is going to continue off. Snow with a really strong start, completely shutting down the proxy two gate, hidden two gate. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, some of the best micro you could ever ask for. Yep. In case you're wondering, like, is one side always supposed to win in that situation? It, it, if the player that's defending has, like, the greatest control, it's, like, maybe even or less. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, you should be able to, in, in the first, like, 15 to 20 second interaction, get enough of a lead that it snowballs the game. Mm -hmm. But snow actually holds, which is insane. No, it was it was certainly very impressive. Uh, we're going to go to Apocalypse for map number two. This is Bisu's number one map pick. So uh, hopefully for his sake, he can pick up this victory. Uh, if he doesn't, it's going to be a short night for him, I think. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed for Bisu here. Apocalypse is our map. Let's do this, guys.
Okay, our three player map or three spawn map. We have both players uh, here in the bottom. It's going to be Bisu on the right and Snow here on the left. As we do every ASL cast, guys, we're going to do a quick plug here for the Patreon. If you want to support us and what we're doing here and keeping the history of StarCraft 1 alive in the English speaking world, please consider signing up for the Patreon. Sign up for a year. It makes a huge difference in our ability to continue to do this. We see some of you guys in the audience down here. Um, Patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Thank you guys so much for the support that you have uh, shown here for the ASL English cast. Uh, just having a great time. Hello from Holland. From Holland. Nice. Well, welcome to Korea. 20 hours to see Bisu play. Damn, nice. I love it. I, I love people coming out to, uh, you know, just see these players that they've watched for who knows how long. You know, you have a lot of people... Uh, in the English-speaking scene that have, have been fans of players like Bisu. Some, you know, at this point, you could have watched Bisu play professionally for, like, almost 20 years. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, I was watching Bisu play when I was, what, like in middle school or a freshman in <laughs> high school, something like that. And, uh, yeah, maybe a freshman or sophomore in high school. But, yeah, he's still here. He's still incredible. And uh, StarCraft lives on. Indeed. So um, let's see what happens in, in this uh, uh, in this match, go ahead, Artos. I, I wanted to mention this because, like, I think we focused pretty heavily on Snow's micro, which was out of control. But one thing now, first off, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this: Rain has shown the best PVP that we've ever seen. His win rate was astronomically won, like every game, yeah. no matter what build order, right? So you see something like Zerg versus Zerg, and the build orders have a huge influence on who's gonna end up winning. PvP, I think that Rain has shown us that decision making is the number one thing in PvP. Obviously, you need good micro and the build order helps and stuff, but even if you have a disadvantaged build, if you know how to play it, you can absolutely win. Uh, and so, yeah, Rain has definitely shown us that. The thing I want to mention here, because Snow did win that and he played really, really well, I think that Bisu made so many good decisions there. Some things went wrong, but like he didn't try anything stupid to try to you know it messed up like he brought his zealots out to the side he was trying flanks he was you know he was trying to get into his dragoons and having the mass zealot trying to uh, overtax the micro of snow like there were so many things that bisu was doing to try to win the game right and it didn't work out for him but i feel like that was some killer instinct that was Bisu making the right choices to try to win in a situation that became exceedingly worse for him. So I still feel like Bisu has, you know, a, a reasonable chance in this series, even though he lost game one. And statistically, the person who wins game one wins like 70 or 80 percent of the best of fives. Yeah, I 100 percent agree with you. By the way, we've got a manor pylon thrown down here. Uh, this is one that is always canceled. You do actually come out a little bit ahead. If you can get your manor pylon down there. Yeah. Note that um, we did not have a zealot made here for Bisu. Is that the same for Snow? Uh, I'm not sure what that is up at the top. Okay, that's a probe. So, yeah, they both they both skip the zealot here, actually. Yeah, so um, when you go for a tech like this, you do get the deny on the scout a little bit earlier. Although Snow is going to basically do one more swoop all the way through. Snow is going for DT tech. Oh. Um, if you're both going for Dragoons and you don't have a zealot in the mix... One player can't force scout the other. And Bisu's going for three game. Oh, well. So this is not good uh, yeah. for Bisu. Now, th there is a world where you can three gate and put on so much pressure that you end up scouting the, the uh, two gate DT and maybe are able to get a forge up and barely get a cannon up. But right now, this build just loses for Bisu. Yeah. Yeah, this is as hard a counter as exists in StarCraft 1. Um, you know, the, the cloaked guys beat no no detection and like three gate builds or no detection you know we talk a lot uh sometimes in pvp about like the rock paper scissors on some of these more flat maps you know gladiator would be the chief one because you have a high ground uh natural but here this is completely flat so it's like well three gate is really good like you can't really go one gate robo very easily and because three gates are really good that makes dt really good which, of course, if you run DT into Observer, you're like, oh, that's that's rough. But here, it's it, like Snow is finding the exact right build to play against. He's going into four gateways, so this is a complete and utter all-in. Bisu, you know, you have to spend every mineral here 
on Dragoons. So he is not going to have detection. This is one of those games where we'll probably see heavy micro from Bisu when he sees that there's DTs because there is that tiny chance like you mentioned. But he'll probably just die as soon as the DT gets to his base. Yeah. I mean, the Robo starts. The, the, the um, Dragoons are going to come in here for the pounce. Now, it's possible the DTs are just going to try to click down onto the Dragoons. If you're going to go four gate behind this, a lot of times what you want to do is, is, is kill all their Dragoons with your DTs. He's going to see this coming in. So he's going to have one DT that's going to go straight to the main. The other's going to stay back. I think Snow might want to try, and well, I guess he can't get a wall in up. Sometimes you can try to plug this up with mm -hmm. a, another unit or two. Um, now, keep in mind, the Dragoons here for Snow are going to be killed off, and that's going to leave the rest of these Dragoons to start to one-shot these probes. The problem is that, you know, one DT was sent across the map to, uh, to push in here. And so this DT basically can't be stopped. It's going to kill every probe, yeah. and that's going to be it. Yeah. I think Bisu was hoping that maybe that was a one gate DT, and then maybe the second gate and the third gate were later. Yeah. Um, or that the, the or that the second DT off a of two gate was also chasing him around, but mm -hmm. it didn't work. And um, I am a little bit worried that we are going to be wrapping this up pretty soon. <laughs> <or tosses. laughs> it's definitely a possibility. That's a big two zero from Snow. A uh, loss like that, you have to you have to put behind you, and I think Bisu again is able to do that. I know I'm like. I feel like a Bisu apologist right now as he loses games, but like <laughs> when you're going three gate, you know that if they do a quick DT rush, you're dead. Like everyone knows that. This is basic basic info. There was nothing special about this game. And you're just you're taking a risk. Just like Snow is taking a risk here, right? That's a it's a very all-in build that he's doing as well. With the four gate and the DT. Uh and you know, if these don't if these don't work as intended, you just kind of die. So you know, he takes a risk. He wants the quick and easy win, and it doesn't work out this time. I got to say, I think we've seen Bisu do this too much in ASL. Yeah. I think we've casted this game too many times of him. Um, where he's gone for three gate. He does it on Neo Sylphid. He does this on um, uh, clearly on Apocalypse, which has a lot of, in, in this matchup, a lot of the same ideas at play here. Yeah. Um, you know, it. In case you're wondering how Bisu could have played differently, he could have gotten a Robo and just defended the uh, the DT play. And then there's a lot of different kinds of games you can have there. So I feel like a poor selection here for Bisu. Not in theory bad, but because he's done it so much, he's such a public uh, figure strategically. I, I, you know, it seemed like Snow just decided a hard counter uh, three-gate goon, and that's exactly what happened. Guys, coming up next, will we see a Citadel on the map Citadel for game three? We'll find out. I
Thank you for waiting, everybody. We're going to be going into game number three here, and hopefully we can see BC recover. I hope so, man. Uh, like, I don't mind his build order choice. It has not worked out for him, obviously, uh, but he has been looking to kind of pick up, like, quick and e not exactly easy, but kind of easy victories, right? Like, he's going proxy, double nine gate, and then he's going into, you know, three gate, goon. It's like he's making the games... I guess easy to play for himself. If he catches Snow at all, Snow's going to die, but Snow's defense, or in this case, his counterattack of the DTs, has been impeccable. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine Bisu coming back three games in a row. I think that first instance where the Zealot got inside the main and was basically completely shut down by Zealots and Probes, didn't even kill a worker, that's going to be haunting for Bisu. Yeah. Not every uh, moment in StarCraft boils down to a few seconds, but this matchup uh, with these players on that map, it did. Yeah. Now, game two, it, it, it can be forgivable. It can be forgettable, right? Mm -hmm. You're opening up with a risk where, you know, it would have been an interesting game, let's say, that Snow went for uh, a Robo or also went for three games. Then we'd have a, a really fun game to unpack, but what Bisu is going for, there there is, uh, you know, a, a corner on that triangle that just says you lose. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> when it comes down to the build orders. Um, by the way, the, the fan vote here, interesting. Very close here between Snow and Bisu. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's, I think it is reasonable, right? Snow still hasn't uh, shown that he can win a championship offline, and uh, Bisu is a god of Protoss. And, I, like, I really, I don't even feel like he's playing poorly today, you know? Snow out micro no. in game one and out, you know, got the rock, paper, scissors victory in game two. Those are things that happen, man. Like, there, you can't prevent every loss. No one wins every game. Yeah, well, PvP has a lot of volatility yeah. uh, in it. I mean, you can really try to sidestep tech uh, and certain decisions in the uh, early game and occasionally get into a really good spot. Nice, from Estonia. Some snow support here. Mm -hmm. Quite a packed studio here today, man. Definitely a couple very popular pros. It just goes to show the population of Protoss players, man. They really do represent 50% <laughs> of the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny we were casting a tvt a while back and the studio is like totally empty and then we get these two protoss players it's partying here yeah we've got koreans we've got foreigners we've got it all yeah well not as much drooling as i would expect to see in an audience for a pvp but you know <laughs> 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 there's definitely a few uh taren and zerg fans out there for bisu as well uh you know, I, honestly, Bisu is a player that I respect more than almost anybody. I've, I've told this story countless times about, you know, when I moved to Korea, I, I got to watch things like MSL, OSL qualifiers, things like that. And Bisu has always been one of the most impressive players in the world. Like, standing behind him, watching him play. I mean, he's he is a god, man. Like, he truly is a, a top-level player. So I'm hoping that he can start to fight back here against Snow. You know, I don't think it's unreasonable for him to make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I guess you got to take it game by game, right? Um, will he be taking any dramatic risks? I don't know. I feel like if you start to play risky games, um, you know, all you need is for is for Snow to find one more opportunity and he wins. At the same time, if you play uh, very obvious conservative games, like you just go two gate goon observer every time. Then Snow can start to take risks. That's why yeah. a best of five is really tricky to play in a PvP here. Um, we're going to be going on to map Citadel here. I guess we're going on there right now, guys. This is game three. Let's find out if Bisu starts that comeback or if Snow is going to close this out. Cross spawns. All right. Snow in the top left. Bisu in the bottom right. I'm uh I'm hoping that Bisu starts comeback here. And again, you know, it's it is possible. And I don't even mind if he keeps playing the same way. Hell, you know, if two of his cheesy builds didn't work, he's due for one of them to work, Tasteless. 
Isn't this the way you think about build <laughs> orders? <laughs> uh, this is called the gambler's fallacy. Or two, just to know. <laughs> Uh, as long as you all in a little bit stronger than the previous all in, you'll be able to win all your losses back, right? That's <laughs> it's something like that. <laughs> and when the roulette table lands on black too many times, you know it has to land on red next, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, you can go out on a limb and, and go for the zero or the double zero tasteless. Don't ever forget That's about right. those. Those are those are very That's crucial right. to the, the Protoss build order arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> zero and double zero builds. Yeah. That's where uh, you make a gate in another main that you haven't scouted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to have uh, gateway openings on both sides. The question first we got to ask is, when will they scout? And nobody's scouting after gateway. Could it be after uh, gas? Could it be after core? Could it even be a scoutless opening? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how they would go about uh, deciding here for Citadel. Uh, you know, Citadel doesn't really have the high grounds. So they just have those ramps that are, well, there's like a little strip of high ground, but, uh, you know, that's it's very, very small. Um, both of them getting gases here, and it looks like Bisu will be our first player to scout. One thing to note is that the rush distances are, like, relatively short on Citadel compared to some other four-player maps like Radeon or something. So, uh, you know, if you do choose one of these higher pressure builds, you are going to be able to reinforce it a bit quicker than on some of the maps. So Bisu um, heading up to the north here. He's going to check the top right. And Snow hasn't scouted yet at all. I've seen Snow do this, and it's going to be a scout after the second pylon. That's about as late as you can go. Now, there are some build orders that are a little bit tricky when you play like this as Snow. I mean, I think... You gotta it, look. It doesn't happen in pro matches, but people can do weird stuff like go for Nexus early on, and just take a base. I think that forces you to try to do like a proxy reaver push. But um, this is going to be a game where basically Bisu is at just the slightest disadvantage because he's going to send his probe out and also not get information in here. Mm -hmm. Not get in. It's kind of funny that Snow sends out his probe that much later than Cross oh. Scouts and finds Bisu first try. Uh, that's some good. That's some good quality play right there. The, everything kind of going Snow's way so far. They both have Zalts on the ramp, so you can't really scout. What What do you use as your like metric for what 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 type of tech to choose here when both of you have denied the scout? I, I see a lot of games where you just go into a robo and you yeah. play it safe. But you know, you can go DT. You could go for a DT expand. Um, I mean, when you look at that, they could be going for, like, a three-gate like we saw in the last game. Um, but it, it's really hard to tell. You're basically playing a blind PvP. Some PvPs, you both scout each other and confirm a couple things. Other PvPs, one guy gets in, the other guy's on the outside, playing from an intel disadvantage. Mm -hmm. In this case, they just don't know what's going on. Uh, they can tell from how, you know, the units they can see uh, from each other that they both went gas first. Not that two gate is particularly popular uh, with Koreans, although it is a build order you can use. Uh, and so they're both going to go for Robo. So this is going to be the first game where we're on virtually the same builds, even ground, uh, and it'll probably go into a macro game. Yeah, uh, Bisu throws a pylon down there, maybe to check for shuttles coming in, something like that. He can see the the angle that they're they're coming in from. Uh, and, you know, it, I, I love the way that Snow is playing this. You saw him use the moving shot on the probe to try to get a probe kill. He didn't quite get it. Bisu came out with his Dragoon and was able to save it. But then Snow even has a probe set up at the other scouting area, right, and sees Bisu trying to push out. But it looks like Snow is going to go back to his base. He's going to play it a little bit safe here and just get his observatory down. Now, there are games where you'll see... And I think we saw Rain do this back in KSL. I know we, when we talk about PvP, we always talk about that PvP finals for KSL. There are games where you can just, even then, even though you're both even and nobody knows anything, still do like a two-gate Reaver all-in, uh, even without observers. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen here. Uh, both sides appear to be banking up minerals for a Nexus. Although I think Snows is going to start a little bit more quickly. Excuse oh. me. This is going to be a Robo Observer... Reaver. We oh. need to see, is there going to be a second gate for Bisu here, or even a third gate? He can sometimes throw down two, or he's going to make his own Nexus. 
Well, it looks like they're doing like basically the exact same thing. Like Bisu getting his uh, his tech as well, getting up to that Reaver tech, but with this slightly faster Nexus. It's only going to be a few seconds though. So this is almost a hundred percent the same build from these two players, which kind of makes me excited to see like how does Bisu do on just a completely straight up game here, and it's going to be a Reaver game, which is generally where Snow excels. That's right. By the way, if you guys wanted to copy a build, this is an old concept. It's still good today. Basically, if you both go um, for one gate uh, gas and you're not sure what exactly is happening, you could just get one observer, try to scout. You want to scout in the path that DT would walk through um, just in case they are DT rushing. And then you just go for your own reaver. Um, usually the follow-up is to get shuttle speed. And in this game, we'll probably have shuttle speed on both sides. I think an older way to play this matchup was to eventually tech into Templars mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, try get a forge and, you know, get zealots with speed. But there are a lot of games where both sides hard lock or just lock in, I should say, into Reaver play. Yeah. And kind of don't back out because the guy that starts to try to tech out of Reavers first can lose to his opponent's Reavers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Reaver really has uh, maybe been the, the most dramatic unit shift since Remastered came out. You know, how long has it been? Seven years now. The Reaver has, like, come from this more supporting, sometimes harassment unit into, like, the basis of two matchups <laughs> completely. Not that it was ever not useful in uh, PvP, but definitely I, I have seen that kind of trend that you're talking about there where I've seen, I feel like I've seen more double shuttle with four Reaver play in the last little bit than I've ever seen in PvP. Yeah, I mean, you can even use one shuttle to come in there and try to drop their workers while the other one will come in and push. Um, and especially in Korean PvP, it always kind of felt like it was starting to go this direction, but uh, you just see it so much now in ASL. Um, Bisu's gonna try to come in from the side here. Now, the pylons that are put at the periphery, they're just there to spot. Um, you want to have an idea, okay, are they pushing me? If so, what angle are they coming at? How can mm -hmm. I be ready for this? Bisu has three gates, whereas Snow only has two. Snow has not gotten his second gas yet, but Bisu's already picked his up. So there's just slight um, differences here in the way each side's playing, although they're basically going to end up at the different, you know, at the same place, excuse me, just taking slightly different paths. Mm -hmm. So... The Observer over the high ground here is really important because Dragoons can never hit the shuttle when it's over that high ground if it's just out of Dragoon range. So that allows you to create this threat where Snow doesn't really want to move out on the map. And Bisu's going to throw down a lot more gateways. We got to right. see if Snow's going to do the same thing. Yeah, Snow is Snow kind of hemming and hawing on what he wants to do. Okay, he does throw down those additional gates. Bisu does remove that pylon with the Reaver. Just a quick fun fact for people, like it costs almost the same in Scarabs to kill a pylon as it does to make the pylon, but obviously it's good to to mess with your opponent's buildings there. Uh, but yeah, it, this, this setup, it looks like they're still basically completely even, like a little bit of a supply advantage here for Bisu. And I think that just has to do with his gateways being just slightly quicker the second gate and the third gate. Okay, the shuttle comes back up. Remember that when you're doing this build, you really don't want to lose any observer, uh, I'm sorry, uh, robo units. I meant like you don't want to lose the observer because it's a robo unit. Like if you drop an observer here or there, you have to stop making shuttles and reavers. And that's a problem. Can he body block this correctly? No, he's going to lose that Dragoon. Well, uh... And you can see Snow's a little bit uncomfortable being too far out on the map. You know, two, sh two Dragoons in the main can be beaten by a speed shuttle and two reavers, obviously. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit scary. If you go too far away from home, uh, you're going to get punished. Yeah. Now, we don't have any Citadel tech. Um, I don't think we've had a forge made just yet. And I'm, we're seeing more gateways, so I think Bisu may be going close to all in. Okay. Uh, you know, six gates plus reaver is kind of like that's full, full production uh, for, right. for PvP on two base. Uh, that's like you spending all of your minerals on army. Now, double speed shuttle comes out for Bisu. He is up by 11 supply right now, and I do believe that that's in that army supply. 
Uh, but Snow has the six gates now. And there is that double uh, speed shuttle with four Reavers play that we were talking about before. Yeah. Now, Snow's doing a good job playing keep away. I don't see the... Oh, no, I do see the second shuttle here for Snow. So he is doing the same thing. Again, they're, they're getting there um, in a different order, but virtually the same types of armies. Nobody has a third base. Oh my god, he's going to try to push in. Now, Snow is very good with the pickup. Only going to eat a few Dragoon shots on that. Bisu's very bunched up, and so he does end up absorbing one shot onto that Reaver. Oh, the man. angle not exactly ideal here for Bisu. Oh my god. Dude, he's getting the crushed. The control here from Snow is so much better. He's, he's crazy. He is getting truly crushed. He dropped all four Reavers out. Snow picks some off. We only have two Reavers left. The army supply does go towards Snow now, and he just continually is getting these very good scarabs. Yeah. You know, it's hard to drop two shuttles with Reavers in it. Mm -hmm. And when you saw Bisu drop it there, it's, it's it's such a big target, and it's also a little bit clunky to get them loaded back up. Yeah. So Snow fractures one shuttle off. He's making a beeline over to the natural. Um, just in the nick of time, Bisu's actually going to defend that. Uh, and uh, so... No, go ahead, Tasis. No, 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 you, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, no, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, it, like, Snow does take a little advantage after that fight for sure. Like, he got a reaver advantage there. I think Bisu has to be careful about utilizing the two shuttles next to each other because Snow will just out-micro him. But I think the game is actually still, like, very playable here for Bisu. It doesn't feel like he's dead. I was afraid he might be there for a moment, but... He's still flying around. The supplies are very, very similar, and Bisu still has a pretty big army. The main is exposed. There's nothing in here. It's going to force um, Snow to pick up. Now, keep in mind, Bisu can actually kill off a lot of Dragoons because this is a kind of a labyrinthian maze to get through, to get back to where the Dragoons are. Um, Snow does dive in. The splitting is pretty good, to be honest. And so he's going to end up losing the shuttle and the reaver. He does kill a couple of dragoons of his own. He's also going to deny Snow's third base. Well, is that going to work? He has a lot of dragoons here, but no reaver support. Snow does bring down his own reavers. And Bisu really, really commits. He moves a lot of dragoons into that third base location. Uh, Snow trying to shove through right now. He brings in his own reaver. And a good target there from Bisu, but not enough to get the shuttle. It feels like... Well, I mean, the supply is still pretty even here, but it does feel like Snow is way out controlling Beast, who's going to have this third Nexus up. Yeah, the Reavers are going to be in the front over here. He does target. That. Okay, Beast, who did with a great shot, kills that other Reaver. Both Reavers go down, in fact. Uh, nice targeting here from Snow. Beast, who can continue to try to advance on this third base. Another pair of Reavers are out. Seems like Bisu wants to try to come in here for the kill. The shuttle from Snow can't really get any ground, but at the same time, Reavers on the ground are going to be very weak if they can't don't have shuttles mm. to pick up in. And I think Bisu might end up losing uh, these Reavers here. Ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Snow is really showing his prowess with that micro, really punishing the fact that Bisu didn't have a shuttle there with those Reavers. He's going to lose the rest of his Dragoons, which means the third Nexus is going to be safe. Bisu's still trying to push it. I think he realizes this is a terrible situation, but look at that, eating gigantic oh. scarabs. Dude, I think this game is very close to done. If I, I would tap out right after that bad run-in. Yeah. He lost five or six Dragoons for nothing. The Nexus will start later. I have to say, I didn't expect Bisu to be this outclassed. I knew that, that Snow is, you know, on paper, he's going to be stronger. Mm-hmm. It's it Shuttle Reaver Micro, but God, he makes it look so easy. That was superbly done. Uh, you know, this, this the great control on those Reavers has made the difference uh, in this PvP because Bisu actually did have, like, bigger gateway armies for most of the game and even equal in Reaver number. It's just some of the decision-making here from Snow, some of the Micro here from Snow with those Reavers has been superior, and now Bisu is playing from a pretty big deficit. We should mention that you get um, Scarab damage with this. I don't think you you get capacity, yeah. but um, that is one of the big uh, features of this style of play now, is that the Scarabs are super damaging, mm -hmm. which can be really tough to deal with. Look at that. He's chasing him back, man. <laughs> the Reaver's chasing back a whole army of Dragoons here. Bisu trying to pull back. He's going to need, like... 
the most amazing micro, the sickest arc to have a have a real shot here. And you can't play the Reaver bouncing against Snow. He will never mess that up. Yeah. He's just always able to macro, produce, push, control the map, and at the same time, just be on top of those uh, those Reavers. Oh my god, almost takes the shuttle out. And he's just going to go ahead and push into the natural now. Says, okay, well, you're weak over here. I'm going to shove. Oh, he's trying to pull everything back here. Uh, the Reavers are going to start to get some shots. You can see the control here just so good. Pulls those Reavers back once again. Another shuttle comes up, does drop them out, but they're far away from his opponent's Reavers. So he's still going to be able to save one of them. And I think that this is maybe the, the killing moment here, Tasteless. Like, the, the oh. micro of Snow is just too strong. Look at that. Look at how he knows. He just knows which one he's going to target. So he actually cycles between two Reaver positions, realizing that that would be the only obvious place to go. Uh, and, and it ends up baiting out a Reaver shot. I Dude. think this game's over, Artosis. Dude, GG, GG. is called. It, it, Snow is truly that wet chick from Minority Report. Like, he knows where <laughs> where the crimes are going to happen, and he just swoops in and picks those Reavers up before <laughs> Bisu even knows that he's going to do it. That was crazy. I mean, you, you know, he's doing stuff on a level. We just haven't quite seen anybody ever be this good with shuttles and Reavers. And the units have been around forever. But what he's doing with it is insane. Like, the fact that he knew to swap, because that's what, I mean, that's what you do when you see that position you say okay well the one shuttle and the reaver and then there's two reavers by themselves well obviously i do that he just knows to preempt that mm -hmm. and because of that he ends up baiting out another scarab that doesn't do any damage now that was uh that was pretty wild a uh, very well done from snow shows that in the even game he wins as well and that's a 3-0 over bisu man i really felt like bisu was playing so well recently that he was gonna have a decent shot against snow but at the end of the day even though i like the strategies he chose this series did not work out for him. It was one-sided, and Snow gets his top four. Well, you know, we were talking about how close this could be and how interesting it's going to be. It, it couldn't have been further from the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, Snow just smacked Bisu down. Um, I, I am stunned at how incredibly talented Snow is. These were three very different games. Obviously, there was a build order winning game two. Not much to talk about there. But holding off the two-gate rush uh, on Neo Dark Origin, and then here on Citadel, just with a better set of Dragoon, Shuttle Reaver control, um, better decision-making, I think better development, honestly. Snow able to take a third even before Bisu did. Normally in a game like this, this would probably be, if Bisu was going to win anywhere, it'd be right around now, and Snow still holds. Yeah. Yeah, and we actually saw here that not only did he have, like, a, a 15 supply lead, he actually was down five probes. So the the army supply advantage was even bigger than we were thinking it was. But still, Snow yeah. just takes the right positions. He micros correctly. He targets everything right. His Reavers are, are just... It's crazy that he can literally have a unit like this that just changes the game completely into his favor over everyone else. We're going to be going to an interview in a second here. Hey! From Sweden, China, welcome. We love you. Uh, let's go to the interview now. Let's see how Snow's feeling. He's moving on to the round of four. We have just wrapped up the third round of eight match of ASL Season 17. Let's have a word with Snow, our third player joining the semifinals lineup. Congratulations. Thank you. A dominating 3-0 performance in a best of five PvP that's been a long time coming. As you advance to the round of four, it's been such a long time since you've made it into the semi-finals that many people could find it hard to believe, with your last time being all the way back in season eight, before you're once again in the round of four. How do you feel? It's been, what, four years? Yeah. The round of four, you know, I don't even remember what it's like. It's good I finally managed to advance. Since I've already made it into the round of four, I think I need to make it all the way to the finals while I'm at it, so I'll prepare diligently. And to be honest, before the games you mentioned, your form is not up to par and you're worried about your performance, but you've shown perfect micro from the first game on. When Bisu went for a double proxy 9-gate build, 
As the first zealot made it into your base, despite the surprise, you managed to get a great probe surround, completely stopping his strategy in its tracks. Did you think things were okay at that point? Yeah, I was, I was really surprised. Right. When the zealot came, I thought, I won't be able to stop the build. But then I got the zealot, and I thought, hey, maybe I could stop it after all. Thankfully, things went well. Last time, I lost in the exact same fashion, but this time I managed to block it, thankfully. Wow, so you were surprised. What's surprising was your micro in that situation. Now, you tried your own strategy in game 2 with a quick citadel to go into Dark Templar, but the image most people or many people have associated with you is you going for Reavers, rather. Was there a reason you decided to rush Dark Templar like so? It's something I go for once, not a, not even in uh, 10, but like every 50 games. I thought I have to use it here once to make people see me as more demanding in future. So I tried it once and uh, thankfully it went in. And then in the third game, you went for your signature Reaver play, the Reaver UMS. As you guys vied for vision in the center, in the lead up to the engagement, you had two Reavers all on the lonesome. But in the end, you managed to lure Beast's army to gain an advantage. What happened there? I too was all over the place. I couldn't pay attention to all the units. I think I just missed my road, but somehow it worked out, and I won. It was a crushing victory, but it seems you weren't so relaxed throughout. You're making it back into the round of four after a long spell, and your opponent will be decided between Sulky and Mini. They can both be considered a tough nut to crack. Well, because they are both better than I am, I will have to prepare from the position of an underdog. I can't wait for tomorrow's results. <laughs> Are you leaning towards one of them as the more favorable opponent for yourself in the round of four? Not really. I think they'll be similar regardless, and winning against either uh, won't be easy. Having made it into the semi-finals after such a long time, you now have to prepare for a best of seven. I bet you're both anxious and looking forward to it. And the fans are likewise going to be watching this one with great interest. Do you have any words for the fans or the colleagues who helped you practice? A big thanks to our beloved head of the K Starcraft University. Thanks to the K University students for their support here. And thanks for practice to Stork, Best, Mighty, Motive, and S Rich. Thank you very much. A lot of people showed up today, a lot of famous and respected people showed up. I will be even more diligent. Thank you. Once again, congratulations on the round of four snow. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. And that does it for our chat with this season's third semi finalist, Snow. All right. Um, look, guys, it was short, but in a way that makes the next round of the ASL even more exciting. The fact that Snow just bashed Bisu is wild to me. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a pretty big endorsement here for Snow to take this season down that many people are expecting. Uh, not dropping a map, moving on to that round of four. Uh, and and we'll see if he can continue to make it. Like I, you know, I don't think he can even really rely on his Protoss versus Terran at this point. I don't know if Sharp has any real chance to make it to that finals. So uh, Snow may have to utilize his other two matchups, but they are looking sharp. Yeah, you know, this is possibly one of the hardest paths here for Snow because um, tomorrow we're going to be doing Sulky versus Mini. I don't know who takes that. That's going to be mm. so fun. But yeah. both of those players are a tough match. Let's also not forget, like, Mini could take Snow down. Mini's crazy down and dirty. He's the Protoss' Protoss, okay? Um, 
And so if Snow does take the season, it will be through the hardest path, I think you could imagine for him. But of course, Solki returning here as the uh, previous ASL champion. Maybe he beats Mini. Maybe he beats Snow after that. He might take this whole ASL. Yeah. It could happen. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's like a lot of different really interesting outcomes here, right? Like Mini, maybe he's on track for another win. Maybe Snow will get his first. Maybe Hero will get his first. Solki two in a row could be. Haven't had that since Queen. Uh, and then the big underdog, I think, in this, in this uh, tournament right now is Sharp, who is playing the best StarCraft of his life. But when you look at the the stature of the rest of the players that are left, these guys are proven to be the very best of Protoss and Zerg. On paper, they are much bigger threats, but let's see what Sharp can do. Uh, he's definitely played um, much better than I think any of us expected. So, uh, you know, sometimes we do have crazy upsets like that. Um, but do be ready for that upload for um, uh, day four here for the round of eight. And, uh, yeah, sorry it wasn't longer, man. Yeah, it was a fast one, but it was a fun one. Thank you for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.